Hello guys, this is Flying Dutchie and welcome back to Imperator Rome. And it has been a while that we played this game, but uh, we are now in version 2. And this game completely changed com uh, compared to uh, the release. And uh, I didn't play the game that much since the release and it's just a complete different game. And we are going to play a new run as Rome. Hopefully this time we will have a fun time instead of being annoyed about the game mechanics. And I think we will because I did some practice runs and it's... Uh, it's a lot better. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just jump into the game, I guess. Uh, we're going to do a new game. Of course we are doing a new game. And we're going to play as Rome. Um, I still want to conquer the world as Rome. Just to be what Rome did. That's still what I want to do. Um, I will go over the new changes in the beginning of this video. Also maybe the next video. Because uh, I need to explain the game to you guys. Because it's completely different. And... Uh, it's more dynamic, there is no click mana anymore, uh, everything is a, is a dynamic province, uh, a, a dynamic process from this uh, this point on, so it's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, we're going to play as Rome here. I will play with Iron Man mode, let's see if we can get some uh, Steam achievements, because I don't have that many. And uh, I think we're just going to start and jump into the game. We will just keep the, the gender rules how they are. Men are ruling the country and doing everything. So let's start. I think we're gonna go and do the Rome. Let's play safe. There we go. Now let's read this thing first. The Senatus Populusque Romanus. Uh, we, we fought harsh against the Semnites to the south. These are the Semnites in the south of our country. I'll go over there very soon. The uh, Etruscans are over here. They also are enemy of course. That's over here, the north uh, expansion with apprehension. Just read this if you want, the Greek city-states, and so on and so on. Just pause the game for a while. And then we will go for the Republic. We will have a truth with uh, Etruria until 455. Now, this is Etruria. Um, one of our main contenders at the start of the game. And we want to uh, conquer them. But uh, luckily, we have now mission trees in the, in the game. And I think the mission trees will give you uh, CBs for free, so that's going to be amazing. Uh, these are the Semnites, they need to go down as well, of course. Uh, let's start with just explaining the, the mechanics now. So there's still money, of course. You make money of taxes, commerce, um, fleet, fort, and army. And wages are still uh, going down the drain of your treasury. But there are no armies anymore, you now have levies in the game. Uh, if you want a standing army, you need to uh, research for legions, but we will go there over there uh, very soon. Uh, the manpower, of course, still there. I'm not sure yet if the manpower is is uh, replenishing your levies, but we will go over that as when the time is there. We have now political influence instead of all the all the mana clicks you can do. Uh, you can do certain actions with your uh, political influence, and you get more the better your people are in your government. Uh, military experience is needed to unlock military traditions. Uh, your stability goes from 0 to 100 now, and it's going with a uh, dynamic um, stability modifier. So now we have plus 16, and the base is plus 1, and then you get a plus 16 each month. And when this number goes up, that uh, stability increase will go down over time, because it, wa it wants to get to a, uh, to a balanced number. There's still like, an expansion in the game, takes down uh, automatically. Also with inventions and, and stuff, you can get uh, less aggressive expansion impact and uh, quicker downgrading of the uh, number. War exhaustion is still a thing. Uh, we, have still, yeah, we still have tyranny. That's uh, still a thing that could be useful for, I think, for your slaves output. But uh, in general, you don't want tyranny if you want to run a stable country. And the support in the Senate is now listed over here because we are having a republic. We are not a uh, monarchy. Uh, so that's at top of here. Let's go to uh, what is over here, because a lot of things uh, changed, of course, and also this interface. Now, there is a macro builder here. Uh, you can build buildings. Uh, buildings are, uh, of course, uh, different from a uh, city and a settlement. This, these are cities. The city of Ostia. The, this is the, the city of Ostia in the province of Latium. This is the city of Roma, Rome in the province of Latium, but over here you have a settlement, and settlements have different building types than cities. And you can use settlements to uh, put slaves there that work for your mines or your farms. But, uh, 
But we'll go over that a uh, bit, uh, bit later because I'm not completely um, familiarized with what is the best strategy. So yeah, buildings here, uh, city buildings, settlement buildings, you can build ships now. Uh, there are a lot of different types of ships you can make. Um, I'm not sure what we need to do to unlock the next type, but uh, we will take a look at that. And we can, of course, do the trade, but we will go over that very soon. Now, the nation overview. Um, most of the things are the same. The, the decision step is now over here. Uh, we will get an alert when we can do something of this. I'm not going to focus on this at the beginning. We want to expand at the beginning. Uh, you can see your territories, your base power of Rome. Uh, that's your families, uh, the power of your families. And uh, yeah, we need to keep the families happy by giving them jobs, the more important families. That's going to be, it's a lot easier now to manage because uh, uh, the important families have a, a color in their portraits. So you can actually see when they are not scorned or when they are scorned. So that's going to be a lot easier. Uh, we have Roman heritage, so we have a bit of uh, bigger integration speed. Uh, of course, we need to start now with our idea slots. So let's start with uh, two military ideas and an oratory idea. So we can get plus 5 loyalty of characters and plus 8% uh, free man happiness. That will give them more output. Free man give uh, manpower and taxes, if I remember correctly. And they give the most manpower, I think. So uh, it's, it's pretty important. Now let's pick two military ideas so we can get this uh, this extra bonus here. We have uh, morale of armies that we can click. Ship building costs. And the reinforcement speed and army morale. We will go full army. We're going to click this one and that one. Uh, the other ones will get unlocked uh, when we are getting uh, more technology. Which we will go over very soon as well. So now we need an, an oratory idea. Uh, we can do less corruption, which is very handy. Uh, loyalty of generals and admirals, not very handy because we don't have generals and admirals at the start. Maybe one admiral. And we have if improve op opinion maximum, so we can improve our vessels. Maybe with a bit more um, uh, points. But I think I'm going to go with the corruption. And there we go, now we have these bonuses here and we don't have any disloyal characters at the moment in our empire in our republic I should say wait are we a republic yeah we are an aristocratic republic with a co-ruler so that's over here that's the overview and the administration you can see your governorships so for the new people let's go over what uh, everything is so you have cities and settlements this is a city their own buildings and stuff and this is a settlement and later on, we are going to try to build a metropole. I found a found a metropolis. But we need 80 population and we are now at 58 in Rome. So it's going to take some time. That are that are the three things you can have in one... Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a territory. It's, it's a city or a settlement or a metropole. One of these clicks. And these are all part of this. This is a province. And in your, this is your province overview, and this is your city um, settlement or metropole overview. Um, so there are some uh, modifiers for your province, like food. Um, if you have a, a good, good province with a lot of food, I think Norba gives uh, plus 3.6. So if you go to Norba, can I find it? Here. Yeah, we have two grain here. And that's because we have 10 slaves working on our grain with a farming settlement. And the farming settlement makes it that you need 5 less slaves to get an extra grain uh, surplus. So we need 10 slave pops to get an additional 1 grain. And we do have 10 slaves here. And that gives us an extra grain on the market. And that also means that we have a surplus of grain in our whole province and it also gives some modifiers but we'll go over that when we go to the trade uh, uh, interface so uh, yeah that's um, that's the nation overview and yeah that's the province we have provinces these are the provinces in the game and provinces are part of regions and uh, regions are governed by someone 
At the moment we have, of course, our, uh, our consul, our prime minister, or whatever you want to call it. But we have also someone else over here uh, governing Magna Grecia. So he's going to um, govern over these people. And you can see in Italia we have these three provinces right now. And we have these three, uh, two provinces in uh, this governorship. And here are all our provinces listed again. And you can quickly uh, change your stance and governor policy over here. You can release people. We're not going to do that, of course. And you can also automatic trade here. It's going to be uh, maybe useful to click here as well, but not sure yet. Now then we have the government. Um, since we are, let's go back to the political map mode, since we are a, uh, a republic, we are getting elections, uh, we have laws that we can enact, Mil military reforms, election reforms, we can get a longer uh, term duration, lower term duration, people are going to like that, people are not going to like that, and so on and so on. And uh, they all have their own bonuses. For example, right now with the demerit team laws, we have... Uh, extra manpower but we can go to get a more export value or more import value or get an anti-piracy CB I don't know what it is but uh, sounds interesting right we can change this and it costs uh, stability and political influence uh, so that's uh, what we have here the government uh, these are our seats from the, uh, the optimates the boni and the popularis uh, these are the three factions in Rome and yeah, they can all get in power. Uh, the more popular you are, the easier it is to uh, to uh, get your Senate uh, approved, I think. And you also don't want corruption. So luckily with us, we got our uh, uh, sanctioned privileges. So we have another minus 0.05 corruption, which is uh, going to help. Uh, there's also an agenda you can uh, do and you get some more approval from your... Uh, your faction that your leader is in. Right now they want to uh, enact the senatorial endorsement law, which is over here. They want more monthly political influence, and that sounds good, but the tribal assembly is giving minus corruption, and I really like that. They don't want corrupt people. So I don't know if I'm going to do it. There are some buttons here to make the factions like you a little bit more, and you can also do this thing now. The senatorial endorsement law, and then... Uh, the senators will come uh, together and we will discuss our next target that we want to attack. But we don't have to use this as the start of Rome because we will have a lot of free CBs that we can use. Now you have the officers still, uh, eight positions for your government that people uh, with the higher skill in the right uh, stat will give you more bonuses. For example, uh, party approval, less of expansion impact, uh, more military experience can be very useful. More taxation, your omen power, we will go over that very soon. Uh, the divine sacrifice cost, which is to increase your stability by using... I forgot, but we will go there very soon. Uh, civilization change, each month. And health. Now what are these numbers, the, the 4 out of 7? Uh, from this point on, things will be with a statesmanship. I think that's how I need to call it. Let's click on this character. Yeah, it has 59% statesmanship. And um, this guy is having 10 martial. And I think... Wait, does he have a martial position? No, he has an oratory position. So he has a, uh, a charisma of 7. But with 59 statesmanship, he, uh, he will only have uh, 4 out of 7, right? Or 3 out of 7? 4 out of 7. So uh, the more statesmanship he gets, the more points will uh, we will get for his job, and this will go over uh, will go up over time because he is the sensor. He has having uh, plus 0.80 percent. You can see here. Well, I'm not sure actually. It decays by 0.59 percent and it goes up with 0.43. So I'm very curious how that uh, will get calculated. But sometimes in these paradox games, you need to wait for one month for the right calculation. So let's just uh, check this again. Uh, when time is there. He is having a lot of wealth. He is hiring a private army. Really? Oh well, we will see about that uh, soon, I guess. Um, I'm not going to change the positions because you can see this uh, blue uh, 
indicator here as well and the red one we have uh, three of the red family on our council and that makes them happy and what we could do still is find very bad people and replace them with someone better for example uh, Gneus Flavius who is of the popularis party that I don't think we like at the beginning of the game maybe we can get a better one with more statesmanship and I think we can because we have someone with nine but we should get Aulus Virginius this position he's having 60 statesmanship and um, we will get way more points at the start of the game yeah we have five out of nine with 60 percent and uh, maybe he can uh, get some more right I'm gonna keep these two over here because they are part of the content family here um, where can you see this Is it somewhere listed now, I don't think we have any more family members that we can put there so we have to uh, keep them how they are uh, Lucius here for the oratory position we can change but he's having an oratory of 10 we only have a 9 as a replacement so we're not going to do that and you have 6 out of 12 so you're going to be a fantastic guy on this position so that's the government uh, economy still the same I think that it uh, was before this patch the 2.0 patch uh, you can get more tributary income but it's not updated yeah we need to wait for uh, one more month I think before we can do all of this so we'll go over that very soon our religion is also changed you have temples now around the map let's open the uh, holy religion and holy side map mode so we are the Hellenic religion and you can see all these uh, these names here we have it 1, 2 and 3 it's only 1 and 2 because 1 is a settlement and 2 is a city that uh, determines the level of your temple but the temple of Roma is in a city so it's level 2 and in your temple you can put re reliquaries R I'm gonna call them relics if you don't mind me <laughs> because my English is not good enough I guess but um, yeah you can uh, put uh, treasures in here and get extra bonuses I think this is for uh, the province or I mean the city or settlement itself let's check this actually so we have the, the tomb of Rommel, Romulus that gives more assimilation speed so in Rome and we go to our pop info yeah the tomb of Romulus is giving plus 0.15 cultural assimilation speed what I want to know now is if that is also over here oh but we don't have other culture people oh wait here we do no there is also over here um, and what about a region outside of so it's a province modifier I think It's the only thing I can think about. Yeah, everyone is Roman here, so we don't have any culture conversion and religion conversion, which is of course very good. But we will get more slaves in Rome, and that will make them uh, go quicker. I think it's a a province modifier, but I'm not sure. Don't see it anywhere. Oh well. <clears throat> So here are your relics, how many you have. This is your omen power. Uh, your omen power is for the second uh, bonus you can get for your nation. And this is your pantheon. We are Hellenic. Uh, here's your divine sacrifice uh, thing. So you need to spend uh, political influence to get more uh, stability. Plus 0.15. Or how long? No idea. But that's over there. Uh, here are all the holy sites that uh, we own. We own Roma with Jupiter and we have Capua for Diana. Now we don't have Diana listed here. We only have um, Jupiter. Now you can change this. You can change your, um, your pantheon deities. For example, if we don't like Mercury for the national citizen output, we can get Pluto. And uh, then we get the passive minus 5% building cost. You can change this whatever you want, but it costs a bit of points, I think. And when we do the omen on Pluto, we get more taxation. Can be very useful at the start of the game. Uh, but I think we will go with uh, bars because we want the morale and the discipline bonuses at the start of the game. Because we're going to go to war. 
um, the Vulcan Hellenix we have as well. Now we yeah we have the Capua temple, but uh, who is? Yeah, Diana here. Diana is uh, as the holy site in Capua, and we own it. So if we put, uh, we we will get Cirrus away for the, the population capacity, which is of course very very good for us because we are going to grow, and Rome needs the ten percent. Uh, we could go for Diana and we get more uh, uh, more food modifiers and we get integrated culture happiness, which is also decent for the Omen bonus. And when the, you have a temple, I think you get 25% extra. I think that's the only reason for a temple. I wish I could see that somewhere. But I think a temple gives 25% extra bonus to both of the things. Not sure completely, but you can change this and uh, change your uh, your passive bonuses. Uh, <coughs> for example, we don't care about tribesmen in our country because we are going to become civilized. Uh, food is not that important. It's still good, of course, for population growth. Um, this can be good as well, Venus. Uh, but let's keep the monthly popularity gain and the population capacity and the citizen output for now. And uh, when we go to war, we will click on this button here, and then we will use our omen. You can do this once for free, that's this uh, tab here. But that is the religion. And uh, all the other religions have their own uh, temples. For example, the Tutsik, no, no Twistic, have one in here, here, and here, and here. And Broborg, of course, in Stockholm. That makes sense, right? This game is uh, made by Swedish people. Uh, anyway, culture. What you can do now in this game is make other cultures accepted. But there is a downside of it. At the moment we have 291 Roman people in our empire. We have 41 Messapians, which are of course of the same culture group, I think. Yeah. Only the, the Hebrews are not a part of our culture group, but they are only in Rome, I think. Not sure yet, not anymore, but they will get converted uh, over time. Uh, but for example, if you just conquer so many people of a, of a wrong culture, you can click. And you can show the culture map mode here, but you can also uh, change the civic rights. You can make them citizens. This will piss off your uh, main culture. The more uh, cultures you make accepted, the less happiness you will get from, from your main culture. So you should really try to, uh, to culture convert everyone to your main religion, which is Rome for us. Only if it's not, not holdable anymore. Maybe you can give them citizenship or noble uh, rights. But uh, for now, we are going to keep Roman only as, uh, as our main culture and the rest will be free but that's it we can only become a free man we will try to convert everyone to uh, the roman culture that's the culture overview uh, trade is still uh, I think still the same but uh, you have some handy buttons right now for example you can now accept all the trades but you can block your capital surplus because in this game your capital province is having a extra uh, bonus from trade. For example, we make uh, one extra cloth in the province of Latium. We make one. Uh, we make one in Fundi, and two in Rome. Make two cloth in Rome, so we have a total of uh, three. And we are trading. Um, wait, we make three and we trade one away. That would be weird, right? Oh, we are, we are getting cloth. Yeah. No. no. Let me let me cancel this. Check how it is. Yeah, we make two cloth, but we should have three, right? Yeah, we have three. We have one and plus two. That is how you need to read this tooltip. I was a bit confused here. So uh, we, we make three cloth. We have one, the symbol, and we have two surplus. This number is the surplus. 
Uh, and that means that uh, when we have an extra cloth, we have uh, uh, a, a benefit to the entire country. And it's only in your capital uh, province, the province of Latium. If I do it in the, the province of Campania, look, we have an extra wine. We don't have a statewide bonus. So you need to try to get as many bonuses in your capital state here. So right now we have an, an extra cloth which gives us oratory tech investment plus 5%. We have uh, a surplus of wine which gives a legion maintenance cost. We have a surplus of salt which gives uh, another maintenance cost. That's uh, really nice. Uh, we have an, a surplus of iron we, which, which gives an entire country 10% heavy infantry discipline. And we have extra grain. Uh, we have 0 out of 6 trade imports right now, so maybe we should import more, more trade goods. Then you get this uh, over here. So what I would like to get at the start of the game is uh, more growth. And maybe something with our ships, because we are going to build some ships. So uh, wood over here, we have one wood in Circeii. And then we can click on the wood here. And we could import wood from one of these uh, these pro these uh, states, I guess, countries. For example, in Dalmatia, we can get an extra wood here. There we go. And now we have uh, a surplus of wood, and now we have ship recruitment speed was 25%. It's not the best thing to have, but uh, at least we have something. Now we can also get an extra horsey, maybe. What do we get from a surplus of horses? Heavy cavalry discipline. No, we don't need that. We don't have cavalry yet. Yeah. Well, do we have cavalry? No, we don't have heavy cavalry, so... Um, elephants, we don't need. Uh, livestock, what do you give? You give pop promotion speed. I really like that. So let's try to get uh, two imports of livestock. That is one. This gives uh, <coughs> local monthly food plus three. Now we get another one. There we go. Now we have the pop promotion speed bonus in the entire country. Uh, salt is giving legion maintenance cost. That's nice, but we already have the salt bonus. Uh, the reputation can be nice. Fish. Free man happiness. That sounds nice as well. And the move slave cost minus 25% is also good. We can make our nobles happier. When they are grayed out, then... I think we cannot trade it, yeah. Three man output, citizen output, Asian maintenance, ship damage, light infantry defense. Hm. Now, when we go to our military, these are our levies. And uh, we cannot make troops at the moment. We need to change laws and uh, do other inventions. But. Um, when we go to war, we have to raise our levies from our uh, government ships, so the big territories, Magna Grecia and Italia. And they will be leaded by the governor. So when you make someone a governor of your uh, government ships, I think how they are called, the biggest region, you need to give them a lot of marshal as well next to their oratory. I don't know, but we will get there soon. So we see that we have a lot of light infantry. Next to heavy infantry and a bit of light cavalry. These are uh, the supply trains. Um, so we need to make sure that our light infantry and heavy infantry are getting the most bonuses. So if I go back to trade here. And we see that the light infantry defense can go up with this. And offensive goes up with base materials. Let's see if we can get two base materials. We can. Let's do it. Base, base metals. Yeah, there we go. Now we have uh, light infantry offense bonus. Uh, we can only uh, do one more trade uh, import, but we will get an extra one very soon by our invention. So let's see what we can get as well. Maybe for a light infantry defense would be nice as well, actually. Uh, build cost is nice. Slave happiness is nice. Tribes we don't care about. Can we get two olives? And yeah, from Carthage, no. Well, we can trade with Carthage for the time being. So let's get two olives. Uh, we need one more trade route. 
trade import. And we can do this by going to our next tab, I think. Where is it? That's the inventions tab. Yeah, this is your trade overview. Uh, you make a bit of money, but we get more from exports, I think. That will uh, happen over time. Uh, so this is the military, the legions, uh, it will be later. We need to crack a loss and we will uh, go over that very soon. And then we can get uh, some Roman traditions. And get heavy infantry bonuses. So we need to focus on heavy infantry as Rome. Uh, mercenaries are still a thing, but we don't need it right now. You can recruit them, it costs a lot of money. Your diplomacy uh, tab here. It's the same as your right click on a nation, I think. So. Now your technology, if uh, four people uh, working on our technology, uh, this yellow family is our technology family I guess. We have three of the yellow family uh, doing research and they are decent with it, they have 8.9, 9 and 7, so 7 is not the best. Um, and when you want to spend your in innovations, which we do have, and don't be, don't get worried, but uh, look at this. These are now the trees for your technology. And for example, if we want legions, we need to go, our cohorts, we need to go to this over here. And I think when we go to professional trading, training, uh, we can now uh, raise a legion in the capital region. So if you want to get a professional army, we need to go to this one and then to this one. Now, I don't know all the, all the deals of all the uh, uh, all the trees here. This looks like a lot of uh, sieging bonuses, entrenchment bonuses, uh, naval stuff. Yeah, this is the naval tree. Not going to focus on that one. Uh, we have civic advances. There are two trees here. Uh, one of them gives more import values, capital, trade routes. I think I'm going to go to this one immediately so we can get the olives. Uh, more output for your people. Yeah, yeah. And just all kinds of things actually. More import routes here as well. Uh, the oratory trees are two trees as well. They give less aggressive expansion. CB bonuses. Tributary income. Not really useful in my opinion. Looks the Imperial Challenge War Goal against all countries that have major powers or more. Wow. More reputation. I mean, there are so many bonuses in this game. And religious. And uh, religious is only one tree. Uh, monthly ruler popularity gain. Integrated culture happiness. Unintegrated culture happiness. More food. Loyalty. And so on. What do we have here? We get fee f four free province investments. Whoa. Stay religion happiness plus 6%. Yeah, the end bonuses are crazy, I think, from all the trees. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the extra import route. So we're going to go and uh, unlock this. We have 8 points. We unlock this when we get to the next level. You get an extra innovation. Import value goes up. And we will get an extra capital import route over here. And now we have the uh, the message that we can get another import. So let's get the uh, seventh route now for the olive bonus. There we go. Slaves are happy. I don't know. I don't know how slaves can be happy in this game, but apparently they are. No idea why. <laughs> I don't know how they can be happy. Oh well. Um, let's see, let's see, uh, mercenaries, diplomacy, technology, uh, all the characters and the families. These are the important families. Uh, all the families have three out of three uh, positions, so they are staying happy. That's just, that's just how it is. Uh, they have prestige and power base. You can just see all your characters in the game. Which are a lot, of course. Now the last step we need to go over is our mission tree. 
Uh, you can now do missions. We have Rome and Italia. Uh, Italia. Rome must manifest her destiny of becoming the greatest city in the world. Ever know. Starting with consolidating control over the potential of Italia. Start the mission. Go. Mission tasks can be completed. Uh, we can do uh, one of these th two as our first mission. Uh, and that takes a year to complete. If we do the Pan Italic Congress. Um, then we will go over our Italian nations and we will ask them for alli alliances and maybe other things. But we of course are going with the Encourage Expansion. Can we do this one now? Uh, we are going to do this one and then we get claims on the Italian Peninsula. So that takes uh, one year and then we get claims all over the place. And then we have to end the Etruscans in the north, the Samnites to the south, Ulians in the south and the Umbrians also in the north. And then we can complete this and get bonuses, pop up assimilation speed, most of it. And I don't know what happens when we did this tree. Maybe we get an extra tree afterwards, but I'm not sure about that. So, I think we went over almost everything in this first episode. So that's nice, so we can start playing in the next one. Uh, let's go over uh, the lack of commander here. We have a fleet. I'm gonna combine them. Uh, we have six Liburnians. This is the weakest ship, I think, in the game. And the Trireme, which is the second weakest ship. And we are going to give them a commander. Someone with a uh, boat bonus. Don't think so. No. So we can just give this to a very good uh, general, I guess. And you are a, a very good general. I think you get an extra marshal. No, it's just a bonus. I'm going to give it to this one because this one can also be good at uh, oratory or zeal. So I'm going to give uh, Publius this uh, this job here. Oh, wrong button. I need to click in the blue. There we go. And the pop-up is gone, so we will uh, use our omen when we go to war, and yeah, we have a couple more inventions we need to do. Let's go over the inventions here. Uh, let's start getting towards professional training. We are not going to make a cohort at the start of the game, because they are way too expensive. Uh, oh yeah, there's another new thing we need to go about, uh, talk about. We get a free province investment when we click this one. There we go. And what is that? These buttons over here. This is your province uh, screen, remember? So uh, your food, your loyalty of the province, uh, how many people are of your culture group, how many are your religion, and how many free men, slaves, and citizens, and uh, nobles you have. That's a new uh, pop group, by the way, nobles. They uh, do only research. Your uh, citizens do research and do manpower. Your free men give manpower and tax. Tribesmen give manpower and tech, but tribesmen are only good in non-civilized uh, countries. But we have a lot of civilization, so they are very unhappy. And they will get uh, uh, demoted very soon as well. And we have slaves. So these are the five uh, pop groups. So we do have a province, um, pre, uh, province investment. So we can get an extra building slot. Another import route. 2.5% uh, extra population capacity. And loyalty and fort infrastructure capacity. Now, we do have a, bone, a, um, uh, a bad thing with our fort infrastructure capacity. We have a six fort in this, uh, this province. And we, can only and we can only sustain five. And we get a penalty for, from it. But I don't see what the penalty is. What is the penalty? No idea. Yeah, what is the expense from the, the fort? No idea. 
I need to check this out in the next uh, in between episodes. I need to. I want to know what uh, the the penalty is from having too many forts. No idea. I, I can't see it. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the uh, fort infrastructure, so we have uh, no more deficit here. Maybe we see something change on the screen here. No, I don't know. Uh, but it takes some time. This takes a year, I think. Yeah, and then we have the bonus. Uh, let's go back to our inventions here again. Um, we can do this one. Starting experience plus 5%. That's with new recruits. I don't think it's for our levies. Apply limit. Naval stuff, no. Uh, we can get some more taxation. Let's, let's get some uh, religious advances here. More popularity is always good. Integrated culture happiness or not. I think that's going to be nice. That's not really helpful. Uh, I guess an expansion impact minus 2.5%. Let's get that one. We're going to go to war a lot actually at the start of the game. Place of characters plus two. That could be nice. Change governor policy cost minus 20%. That's also nice because I need to change it to culture uh, integration. So let's get uh, this one with... I guess this one. We're going to use that at the start of the game. We have one left. Do we have a tree that we don't have anything in? No. Let's go uh, continue to watch professional training here. Let's get basic training. So, there we go. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is your population because this is now all dynamic, right? So, for example, in Rome, the city of Rome, in the province of Latium, uh, we have seven buildings. All the buildings give uh, a bonus. The ones on the, the downside here are having a limit of how many you can build. For example, you can build one earthwork, one foundry, one great temple, one grand theater, and so on and so on. And they all have their own bonuses. Um, but when you go to the pop population here and you, see, you click on the view pops info, here you can see your growth. When we get a new citizen, there is migration that are the green arrows. People like to go to cities. And I don't exactly know why. Yet. Because there's a holy site. That's a very... Uh, yeah, the slave promotion allowed. If this is disabled, slaves will no longer promote to other pop classes. This is useful if you want to preserve a minimum number of slaves for the pro production of trade goods. Um, slaves become very unhappy. Now I think it's okay. Slaves can promote in our country for now. Um, but this is the thing that's all about. The promotion and demotion. Uh, since you have a lot of buildings. Uh, since you are a city instead of uh, a, 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 a settlement. You have a desired percentage of a certain pop group. For example, uh, we want 16% uh, nobles. We only have 8% and that means that uh, over time, that goes pretty quickly actually, every month 19.5% is gained. So in April, I think that's wrong, I think we need to let the game run for a month, uh, we will get a, a citizen that will be promoted to a noble. And we will have a Jewish he uh, Hebrew citizen that will become a free man. And uh, the game will automatically try to get to the numbers that are on the downside. So we get more slaves as well. And we will have 0% tribesmen because we don't uh, care about tribesmen. Because we are a civilized country. But they will uh, get demoted, uh, the tribesmen, automatically. And uh, based on your building types, what you are going to build in your country, uh, this number changes. And my plan is with Rome, since it is only having cloth, which uh, makes the nobles happy, of course. 
Um, we are going to try to uh, make Rome a research center. So I'm going to try to build buildings that give uh, a more desired percentage for nobles. For example, an academy. Uh, you get 3% civilization. This is your civilization uh, tab here. We now have how much? Where can I see it? Uh, 44. And 100 is the maximum. And our maximum that we can get right now is 45. And if I would build an academy, we get 3% more civilization. And uh, the noble desired ratio goes up with 5%. And that will increase our research. And they become happy. And we can have only three of these in a territory. So a city or a settlement. And I think that's going to be uh, very useful for us to build. I think I think Rome is going to be our research center. So we really want to build buildings that... Uh... Yeah, there's also a court of law here already built. Which will make us give uh, get a lot more citizens. Just 10%. I think at the start of the game, we are going to build the academy. You can see that over here. It takes 180 days. And then the pop uh, desired optimal ratio for nobles will go up. And that's what we want. And that's how the pops uh, work in the game. And they are the happier they are, the more output you get. The more taxes and manpower. And for slaves, the more production of your trade good. And taxation. Mostly taxation, actually. Just, uh, you just need a, a certain number. You need 18 slave pops to get an extra cloth. We only have 4 in Rome. This will change over time because uh, we will get uh, some uh, slaves from the wars. And I think that's going to be it for this first episode. I think I talked about everything, so that's very nice. And in the next uh, episode we're going to start playing. And start integrating our vessels and start some wars, I think. So... Uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode, guys. Don't forget to like the video, since this is the first video in the series. And say something in the reactions tab. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, of course. If you do all these things, you would help me a lot with the YouTube the research, uh, the search algorithm. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys in episode 2, where we're going to start playing. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.